Now, clocks present a whole different set of circumstances and a different set of problems compared to picture frames. So much depends upon the type of movement that you have. As an example, here's a couple that I like real well. They're eight and a half inches in diameter. The, the hole that it goes into is seven and fifteen sixteenths. And that hole has to be all the way through in order to be able to get in and to, to adjust the time and set the time on the clock. Uh, which is true in, in most clock movements. You set them from the back. Uh, here's another one I like real well. Six and a quarter inches overall dimension. But the hole in the back is three and one eighth inches, which is obviously more than an inch and a quarter that we have, which we can cut on this machine. We'll show you how to get around that too. Here's another movement. It's kind of nice, not too large. This particular one is three and a half inches. It takes a three and an eighth inch hole all the way through. Now, you know, clocks are basically round. And of course, the ringmaster is ideal for cutting these round blanks so that everything will fit properly. Uh, however, there are some special considerations that you have to make. Obviously, when you're dealing with one where you have to cut the large diameter hole for the eight and a half inch movement, you're going to be limited somewhat to the width of the frame itself. In this case, it's going to be about an inch and a quarter, about what we would normally expect is our maximum cut. And we then, therefore, want to set this up and draw it out on our blank. And again, we're going to cut straight through from you know, both the inside cut and the outside cut, and, and basically make it the same way as we made a picture frame. When you get into the smaller ones, however, and obviously we wouldn't want to cut on the small one here a 2 and 3 16 inch hole and only have it just a small frame, or of course I guess there's nothing wrong with that, I like to have a little larger frame. And I want to show you how to get around these limitations, especially when you're fitting up clockworks. Okay, now to show you how I've laid out my block in order to make up my larger clock. First thing, of course, is I did is I took my diagonals and found the center of my board. Then very carefully set a compass up so that I can come up with this circle in here, which is 7 and 15 sixteenths. Adding an inch and a quarter of that, that comes out to roughly a 10 and 3 quarter inch outer frame. And that will allow me to set my clock insert on the inside here and give me this inch and a quarter frame. This is extremely important that you do this correctly. It's the same way when you go to drill a hole. A lot of times you can be off on drilling the hole, but when you're actually cutting to a line, you don't have that luxury. You must be exact. So working on the larger ones, you want to make very, be very careful in making sure that everything is set up and your measurements are absolutely correct. All right, what you're looking at here is a prototype of a bandsaw attachment, which we made up here in this shop. It gives us an increased surface area. And of course, the other thing is we have a sliding fulcrum point here, which we can actually make a piece and we can cut up to a 32-inch uh, circle on this as an example and not put a mark in it. We've adapted this one slightly by making up a little collar to fit over the top of this, this nut here. And there's a stop in here so we can predetermine exactly how far this is going to go in. So when it comes to actually doing it, all we have to do is to set that half inch hole on there, move it in, start to saw, and we're ready to cut. That's all there is to it. Makes it very handy for doing a lot of the work that we do with the Ringmaster where we want to get down to a round blank to start off with. We're going to go ahead and we're going to make this to the outermost limit now, get the size, the outside size that we want here. Again, as soon as it stops cutting, we'll stop and check and make sure 
get everything pulled back, and we now have this outer limit that we're looking for. Again, what we're going to do, first thing we're going to do is we're going to sand this on the outside. Get as much of the sanding done as possible while it's here. It's the fastest way to sand the outside. So keep a fresh edge against it. I've moved my cutter in now so that I can get the diameter that I need on the inside and we're ready to make that cut. Cut it off the same way you would a picture frame, straight in cuts. Listen for it to stop cutting. Stop your machine so it doesn't flop around on you. Center your blades. Loosen the head up. And bring it back. And now we have our basic clock frame. We should be able to, of course I moved them, but should be able to fit that clock right in there. Let me get that and I'll be right back. So what we'll do is I'll do the round over on it. I'll sand it down. I will apply some finish and then we'll insert the clock works into this particular one and this will be done. All right, on this particular piece here where we have the three and an eighth inch hole, we have a large frame around the clock the way it is and of course we want wood to stick out beyond that, give it a nice frame to sit into. What we're going to do is we're going to actually drill a hole in here. Now, obviously, I've, you can see I've got a three and an eighth inch Forstner bit set up in here into the drill press right now. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the Forstner bit and we're going to partially drill through this wood. Just deep enough so that the Forstner bit is well into the wood and it'll be repeatable. Then we're going to take it out, we're going to change the router bit over, we'll drill our half inch hole all the way through. I want to take this down in there about a quarter of an inch. All right, now we're down in there about a quarter of an inch and I can come back to this and I'll be able to seat this in and the edge of the Forstner bit will guide it the rest of the way through when it comes time to finish the drilling all the way through. Not unclamping anything. We're going to go ahead and we're going to take this bit right out of here. And what we'll do is we'll just set the bit aside. We'll get our half inch drill bit, put it back into the chuck. And we'll be able to drill the half inch hole all the way through. It'll definitely be centered right on that piece where we started from. Now we have our half inch hole drilled right through the center. Here's our larger diameter hole, which will be our drill guide when we go to finish drilling it out. We're now ready to go back to the ringmaster and cut whatever size we want. All right, we've mounted the blank, we've cut the corners off, and we've mounted the blank back on. I've mounted it so that you can see this, this larger diameter hole in here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the cutting net in, and I want to cut this just about as large as I can cut it. So I just spin it and check and make sure I'm onto my wood all the way around. Essentially lock it into place, double check everything. Yeah, we're a little tight on that one. That's a little better. Because this outer diameter is really not critical. We just want it large enough to frame the clockworks. Once we've done that, we'll lock it down. Start it up and we're going to do again the straight cut. Same as we did on the, on the, uh, the last clock, the same as we did on the, on the picture frames. It's just a straight cut. We're ready to cut the diameter. Stop cutting, the ring is loose, loosen the cutting head here, pull it back, take this off, 
We're ready to demount this. And now we're ready to go back to the drill press, complete our cut out so that we'll have an actual hole all the way through which will fit the works of the clock. All right, what we did was we took this back to the drill press and using the counter bore that we had in there, we just were able to get it positioned directly under the router bit or under the drill bit itself, clamp it into position, and we let the side walls that we had counter bored actually guide the Forstner bit all the way through. Now in this particular clockworks here, there is a small ring that goes under this hole and the clock will then fit inside of there. But this will give you some idea that we, how we've been able to make that with a rather attractive large frame. All that's left to be done now, of course, is stand the standard sanding, rounding over the edge, much like we did the last one. We'll get some finish on it, and when we come back, we'll examine the two clocks that we've finished. What we've done now is we've gone ahead and completely put the finish on our, on our various frames and mounted the clockworks right in there. Now, if perchance the hole is not absolute, remember we can always put shims in the back or, or uh, you know, as long as we're not way off, we can always put a little shim in the back. And I like to use a little CA or super glue in, in them. Uh, I don't want that clock to come out under any circumstances. Understanding that wood is going to contract and, and uh, expand with the, with the humidity and the temperature, what I want to do is I want to make sure that clock is going to stay into that, that particular frame. And that's basically all there is to it. The smaller ones that we showed you, same situation as we did here. Counter bore the big hole, then drill it through, then cut your overall frame. One of the beautiful parts about the Ringmaster is round pieces are really a cakewalk. It just, it'll cut them exact and uh, just not a problem. So have a little fun with it. Enjoy it. Try it. Look around, get some, uh, get some clockworks. Uh, we do have a source on the larger ones if you're having difficulty finding it. If you get a hold of us, we'll, we'll try to get you steered into the right place. Hope you've learned something out of this tape. Uh, it's just, just a couple of things that some people have a little trouble with and they get started in trying to comprehend exactly what they're trying to do. So what we hope we've been able to accomplish is step by step take you through the process of making both the picture frames and the clocks and giving you some incentive to go ahead and try something new and a little bit different in your shop. Thanks so much for your attention today. Here what we've done is we've turned the clock face over, we've drilled a, a one inch hole uh, just slightly uh, just slightly uh, deeper than the medallion, put the medallion in so that we can actually identify our work. And it's, it's important when you, when you finish your work, you're proud of it. Get your name on it somewhere or the other, whether you use a medallion or write it on with a pen, doesn't make any difference. Just be sure to mark your work. Another thing occurred to me while I was getting these ready and putting these away, in addition to putting my mark into the back of it, my, my little medallion to identify when it was made and who made it, we are looking at this particular clock and I thought, gee, this is somewhat of a stark frame for the fancy face clocks and kind of gave a, a uh, it just didn't sit well with me. I, I, I can't explain it. I think it's something that everybody looks at a little differently. Uh, a little different face in this modern looking frame would look fine, but I felt that this was just a little out of place. So what I did is I simply took our, one of our frames, the cherry frame that we made, and deepened the, the rabbit just a little bit so it would fit right around here. And as you can see, it creates a whole different concept, a whole different contrast between the cherry, the oak, and now that particular fancy frame seems to work a lot better in this particular case. Uh, just wanted to bring these to your attention to show you how you can combine the two by building it up with a frame around the clock itself, adds a little bit more beef to it, uh, makes it very, very attractive. So try some different things on your own. Uh, you know, you're only limited by your imagination. Uh, the basics you've got, and from there on in, let me know how you make out. Show me some of your work. Uh, send me a picture. I'd really appreciate seeing what you're doing with it. Thank you.